Hey up everybody and how do to our second episode here on today's Loose Lips. The chat before was with Nick Muldoon. He was speaking to us about everything to do with being involved in the film critiquing world and how life in Buffalo, New York, America is as well. Right now we're going to be speaking with Chris Jack who is a trainer fanatic. He has just come to the group so I'll just accept and we shall crack on. Hey, how are you doing, brother? Yo, what's up, what's up? I'm so happy that you're in the trainer spaceship. <laughs> yeah, if, it's a cool if, place to be, man. <laughs> if you have a look, that's, that's punk there. That's like them playing out from the actual <laughs> uh, pyramid that they play out. And I feel like they've got uh, sex in just like yours are trainers. They've got to. They've got to. <laughs> We've got to, yeah, but mate, cool, it's man. incredible, man. Before we do, shout out Lee Crowder, he's in the group. Shout out, Ooh, my brother always. See the breakdowns in the comments there. Yeah, you can see him, he's always about, well, he needs mentioning <laughs> because it's probably through, well, it is through him that we became acquaintances Absolutely. and got to know one another. So, I mean, yeah. let's probably start with the DJ inside and then we'll bring it to, to the trainers for the sort of yeah. main bulk of it. So, are you for still sure. involved with the DJ world? uh subtly yes um i'm kind of on an extended hiatus at the moment uh which has been nearly two years now um just kind of taking a break from djing from clubs from festival life all of that kind of stuff still quite actively involved from behind the scenes but uh not not as much like playing to to any people in clubs or anything like that at this stage um no no idea when i'm going to return or if i'm going to return but uh yeah it's it's there. I think this lockdown's got me itching a lot to to get out there again. But we'll we'll see what happens. What's the scene like out there? Yeah, I mean it's still it's still rocking and rolling. I mean, obviously not right now, but um, you know, I've, I've I've popped into clubs and and festivals and stuff like that over the last two years uh, when I've really got that itch. But um, yeah, I mean it's. It kind of like for, for club culture, it kind of shifted more into an after hour space, which was kind of when I was getting out of it. Um, you know, a lot of the sets and stuff were in the really, really early hours in the morning, kind of weeknights, things like that. The whole sort of vibe just got a little bit, just got a little bit too aggressive for me for like for where I am in my life and what I was doing. So yeah, just decided to take a break for a bit, you know, see what's happening. Do you feel that the two worlds could ever merge? I sort of feel like if there's a showcase of you showing your trainers or showing a new feature and then maybe doing a set around it or making it a bit more of a, a cultural feel where people are coming, getting to know you, speak with you in person, and then you play a set while people are chilling. Could you see the merriment of the two worlds? Yeah, look, I think, I think music and sneakers are always going to be culturally linked in some way or another. Like, there's a lot of that, um, not even down to like collaborations of kicks, uh, but you know, like the whole culture is just intrinsic in each other. You know, they all feed off each other. Mm. Um, you know, you look at guys like Virgil Abloh or DJs, stuff like that, really bringing that whole sort of theme uh, into the festival space. I mean, he's like the perfect example of it. Uh, you know, like doing custom pioneer stuff. Uh, I don't know if you've seen those things. Yeah, yeah, all the, the pure uh, white ones. Oh, well, let's yeah, say off and he's, white, and he's got brand, the orange yeah. and he's got the see-through. He's got all of that stuff. You know, that kind of shit really excited me. Um, you know, just to see, like, the DJ sphere, like, just from a gear perspective, evolve into that space as well, you know. I mean, you, you'll know, and, and Lee was on the uh, who was on the live who introduced us all the way probably 10 years ago now uh, up in the UK. Uh, we got very excited over new Pioneer gear and stuff like that. So it's it's kind of nice to see how that's kind of gone full circle uh, in that space as well. But yeah, I mean, never say never. Like I, I, I do often look for for opportunity to try and collide these two worlds together a little bit more. But, you know, right now where I am, like with sneaker stories, uh, which I'm sure we'll get into later, um, I'm in a really comfortable space and really learning a lot, a lot of new skills, things like that as well. Uh, in putting this whole thing together. I think uh, it is a great example to use Virgil because not only is it the the aesthetics like we're discussing of, of the equipment, but 
He's on lineups yeah. at DC Ten. He's playing Coachella, like you know, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not just like little handouts. Yeah. He's really like yeah. getting respect in there as well. So it is cool, yeah, Wilder, because sure. the, the worlds do really link on. I mean, um, certain yeah, trainers can break a movement. You think of Run DMC and hip hop and the amount of like the weather. Absolutely. I did ask. I was speaking with a few American friends, and they were really saying that. After that, Adidas wasn't really popping. I mean, I think of over here and I think of what we call casuals. So it started off as maybe yeah. football hooligans, but then it went into a bit more just casual Spizzy park wearing, <laughs> you know, with the Adidas and yeah. the Samba. That's, that's sort of me. That's where I'm at. And then yeah. Nike really kicked it off in America, but it was the Yeezy that tended to bring people back to Adidas, which is crazy. Yeah. I, 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 did, I never thought of it like that. <laughs> Yeah, I think like, the birth of the Yeezy and really the product base of Boost, um, you know, putting this material into the midsole, uh, which has completely changed or revolutionized Adidas as a brand today. I mean, pretty much every one of their models in some shape or form has Boost in it. And, and it all came down to the Ultra Boost. It was a defining moment that on the back end of Kanye West with Yeezy, with Boost products in their shoes as well. Uh, they were some of the first sort of lifestyle and collaboration shoes to feature that product. And it blew up like the hype was crazy. I mean, they just kind of caught Nike and Jordan napping at that stage, uh, which is 2015 uh, to, into 2016. And then, yeah, I mean, for Nike to turn it on is so easy. Like their turnaround, like from from an idea into the factory, into the store is like three months at some stage or in, in some instances rather. Uh, and then they just started hooking up with guys like Virgil, like... Well, well, all of is... the people that are like culture leaders in that space and it's just bam they're back <laughs> well this is it so we, you probably got more knowledge in this but was it true that Kanye brought Virgil into the game uh, with, uh, with the... yeah I, I, theoretically the... so, so there, there was a there was a team of like creatives uh, that were in and around this is how I understand it at least a team of creatives uh, of which all of them have turned into like massive brands themselves. So there was, I think, Samuel Ross from A Cold War. Um, there's uh, Matthew M. Williams with Elix. He's got his own thing. Uh, Virgil obviously had Off-White. Uh, who else was in that game? Uh, Saleh Bembury, who's now like footwear head of creative of uh, Versace. Uh, all of those guys like were all in Kanye's camp. Like they were all doing the same thing uh, and working together on stuff. And and, you know, that's why it was quite an emotional thing uh, at Virgil's first Louis Vuitton um, yeah. fashion show when they had that embrace uh, between himself and Kanye because, you know, I think it was always Kanye's dream to be in that position, you know. Mm. But it was like it could never happen in that particular way. I think there were conversations that were had with um, uh, the LVMH group prior to Virgil getting that position with Kanye, uh, but it didn't work out that way. But, I mean, it's it's really cool to see how, like, all of the stuff has, um, all of those guys have made it in, in some way or form with their own brands and they all kind of support each other and sort of cross pollinate between each other. And it's pretty awesome to see. It is when you think of, I remember Kanye, I mean, I, one thing that stands out is the Zane Lowe interview that he did when he just ranted and he was saying he wasn't been letting into the world, people were just perceiving him as a rapper and he's so much more. And people yeah. almost ridiculed him at that time. I remember it was uh, Jimmy Fallon who was ridiculing him. And then he went on the show, did Kanye, and Jimmy almost yeah. backtracked it. And I think he's a very emotional person, but it shows that his foresight has come to fruition. Do you, do you find yeah. that people really buy into the interest of the back catalogue of the story? I mean, obviously, a Yeezy is going to be sold off the brand of, of Kanye. But do you find that that is something that, casuals even look into when it comes to trainers look I, I think like when a brand is as successful as what something like Yeezy is there's just a lot of like spin-off people are buying product just because it's cool um you know I see a lot of people uh that want to get into sneakers and sneaker collecting and all of this kind of stuff every day in the dms and you know these guys don't they don't know story they don't know history they don't care either like if they got a pair of Yeezys on feet like a 350 or whatever it's like a, it's a form of acceptance for a lot of people. It's like, fuck, if I can get like heat on my feet, then I'm going to be perceived as this or, or that. Um, I think there are a lot of people who, who do care about story and history. And that's, I think, is, is very evident in, in, in sneaker stories and with the kind of reviews that I do on shoes. Because I really like to go into like the background of why that shoe exists, who the designers are, if I 
can get access to that information, of course. Um, and there is a genuine interest in that. But I think like, you know, once a brand gets as big as something like Yeezy, um, it just takes one celebrity to wear a shoe, something like that. And it's just a spin-off, this crazy spin-off on, you know. I mean, he's a what, billionaire now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the he, Yeezy he, brand. Apparently he said to it's Rick crazy. Rubin, he's been a billionaire for years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what he yeah, exactly. and said. He's like, I've been a billionaire then, like, for years. Such a canyon. He's like, I'm a billionaire. But I'm a, I'm a 3.1 billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> Shame. <laughs> do you do you find then that there's a lot of trainers that might go under the radar and then is that where you sort of come into it where you know what do you what do you look for when you are looking for a trainer that could make the the sort of podiums behind you yeah for sure man like you, there, there's so many kicks out there right now and like you know a big reason i started sneaker stories was to highlight those kind of things to highlight stories that brands weren't able to tell themselves um you know there's plenty of shoes uh, I mean, look, the ones behind me at the moment are kind of like the really cool ones, <laughs> but there there are lots of shoes uh, which completely go under the radar uh, that not a lot of people know about, uh, which are general releases. They're like, they're very affordable to the average person uh, and they're really, really good value for money. Like I do look for stuff like that as well. Obviously it's like, it's a bit harder for me having something like sneaker stories now because you know, like in terms of what people want to see and what people want to mm. understand more. And one of the biggest benefits about sneaker stories is that, you know, a lot of these products behind me, they sell out instantaneously. You've got to look to the resale market. You've got to end up paying, I mean, this shoe, like in South Africa, I don't even know what it is in pounds at the moment, but they're probably around 50,000 rand or whatever. Now on the resale market was probably like that two and a half thousand pounds. And wow. uh, like, it couldn't even, it probably might even be more now. Like, and this is just like completely spiked in price. Uh, but you know, there are people that are willing to pay that kind of money for this particular shoe, but they don't know if the shoe is going to fit them. They don't know like the details behind it. They want to find out more information on that. Uh, so that's kind of the benefit of sneaker stories. And that's why I kind of find myself, you know, like more honing in on shoes like that, that are really popping at the moment. Like not just because, it's what people are searching and things like that. But also I know that's going to be providing the most value uh, to the majority of people in that space. But yeah, I mean like general release stuff, like it's quite funny if I can find one, this shoe right here, like this is given to me by Adidas, it's the, the super courts, like a new, it's like an archive shoe that's been like pretty much reimagined. It's the most viewed video on my YouTube. <laughs> and it's like, not a hype shoe it's a general release shoe it's like 1200 rand or whatever and uh like this is this is what this like makes me so stoked because you know like most people would just think like it's easy it's off white stuff or whatever but this is actually what people want <laughs> so yeah this is this is a cool one uh and there are lots of others which i i get into as much as possible and i'm really trying to do that more with with sneaker story style like I've bought on some other like content contributors uh, just as recently as Friday, um, wow. really to try and expand the content offering on sneaker stories. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that I miss and uh, I can't see it all. There's like, there's so many different shoes releasing every day. Uh, so I really want to try and bring that as an expanded uh, content offering to the audience. That must be a, an interesting evolution. You know, you've started Sneaker Stories because of the love of your trainers and now it's reaching to a point where you've almost got to appreciate somebody else's taste in trainers to be able to mm. tell the story in a way that still suits your brand. That must be pretty crazy because yeah. it, it, with something like this, it, it's completely organic from you. It, it's, it's, it's the taste, the brand, the style, it's how it looks, it feels, it's you. So how yeah. do you then go to somebody else to to make content under your umbrella? What do you look for? Um, well, I mean, when it comes to like reviews, and are you are you talking about like getting other people to to contribute content or uh, to do reviews? Yeah. Um, okay. Well, so I do all the reviews. Uh, like that's how I just have to manage the output of it. Obviously, all the reviews I do are, are video ones. Um, so that's all filmed in this room, pretty much with me. Uh, the kind of content contribution here is more like, um, you know, like leaked images of stuff that's coming out. Right. Um, you know, if something's like on sale that I've missed or, you know, getting a conversation started so people can interact with each other more and engage I'm more on you. the platform. 
Um, so theoretically, all the content that it's basically called Sneaker Stories by You. Um, and I mean, we're literally like three days into it now, but it's 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 really incredible. So like, I pretty much get. Uh, I'll just actually show you quickly because I've got my laptop here. Um, like pretty much all the contributors. Like if I can just load this up. Um, one second. So like these are like all the different posts like that will be like upcoming on uh, on sneaker stories and those are the contrib like from the contributors and I'll go in here and like re-edit that to the sneaker stories brand um, just to make sure like the same tone is like kept consistent throughout and also like if there's anything that I know more information on because I've obviously got very good ties with brands and stuff here in South Africa so I know that if we're getting uh, specific things here that might be available in the States and we're not getting it here, then I can at least add that information in. Um, and I can also, you know, just give my, my sort of touch on, on things like that. So that's how I can like overall keep the brand the same um, and consistent in this with its uh, communication. Amazing. And do you find yourself, could you be a trainer consultant within that sense? You know, like um, you get stylist on TV shows or music videos. Do you feel like people have that, urge to to tap into you for a lot of your knowledge do you think that you could be some form of a training consultant to individuals so yeah people reach yeah, out in that capacity? yeah look i mean sneaker stories is a is a free offering um and it, it's a hell of a lot of work because i'm literally fielding like like minimum 50 dms a day of questions um so like the nice thing now with having the youtube channel like in the beginning um, I had to do all the content on Instagram and it was all temporary because like after 24 hours in the story, yeah. it would disappear. And then only like the save the story highlights thing came in, but no one really uses that. Um, I mean, there's like, I think there's 300 reviews on my story highlights and like no one actually watched them anymore. They were only watching them while they were hot, like in Instagram stories, you know, now being able to have content that lives forever on YouTube uh, has really helped me just to like speed up the process of getting back to people. Um, you know, because I'd like, I mean, today alone, I think there were at least 15 people asking uh, where I buy shoes from. And that's like the most common question. Because everyone wants to know where you get stuff from, like, you know, who's who's authentic. There's so many fakes in this game. Uh, you know, so now I've got a video. It's nearly done. <laughs> it's literally like busy editing it over here. Um, behind the scenes exclusive. <laughs> behind the scenes exclusive. Uh, and that's what I've been doing with Bear is just shooting this, um, basically compiling a list of all the authentic places that I've used personally. Um, so I can give information back like that. But to go back to your question on consultancy, um, I have been hit up from a bunch of different retailers and brands to like offer insights. Like I've done training sessions at Adidas for some of their uh, retail staff, uh, which are in their like sort of bigger retailing accounts. Uh, like we've got a, a store here called Sports Scene. Um, and I was invited to come do a training session with their staff uh, just to speak a bit more about culture and the future of retail. Um, so that stuff I love doing. Like, I think that's, it's really awesome because you, I do sit in a very cool position where I've got a lot of knowledge, obviously. Like, this is literally what I do every day now. Um, you know, it's like finger on the pulse is an understatement when it comes to sneakers and like what I'm doing with sneaker stories. So, uh, yeah, it's nice to be able to use that. Um, but I do think like overall speaking, like brands in South Africa are like slightly behind the curve when it comes to this form of like interaction and marketing. Um, slowly but surely there's, there's more like brand orientated content, uh, which is coming on the table, but it's still like, it's very far behind like my sort of uh, colleagues, if you will, on YouTube that are in the States or in the UK, uh, which have something more like permanent set up with brands. Is there a opportunity to collaborate with any of the UK or uh, American based content creators like yourself? Is that something that, that has, has been spoke about? Um, you know, look, there, there's, there's opportunity for collaboration all over. You really just have to go and put yourself in a position to be able to do that. Um, you, the thing is with Sneaker Stories, um, you know, although it was born on the back of, of like my collection and my passion for this and just kind of wanting to learn new skills myself, um, it was also out of a need for localized information on sneakers and drops and stuff yeah. like that in South Africa. So all of us like sitting out on this side of the world or watching guys in the UK or in the US to get like information on drops or like see on foot shit or whatever it is. Um, and it's like, 
that's all cool. But like at the end of the video, they're like, cop this at Kif or like get this at an offspring or whatever. Like we don't have Kif, we don't have offspring here. And I don't know what $120 or pounds is, you know, like, <laughs> fuck, what does that mean for me? <laughs> you know, so like, that's really like what I wanted to do the most here is to localize that information and give accurate information based on the product access that we have here in South Africa. Um, so the interesting thing is like the, the Sneaker Stories Instagram page is probably like, it's, I mean, it's dropping now, but it's like, it was around 60%, 70% South African follower base. Uh, that's obviously expanding much further away now as we break into the American and the European market. On YouTube, um, I mean, some of the video, I mean, there's, there's probably over 70 something countries was the last time I checked of people that are watching my content. Wow. Um, and like 40% on some of the videos, depending on shoe, were coming from the States. So um, that was a really interesting analytic for me to really start thinking about like what's going to be possible from, you know, doing collaboration stuff, doing brand stuff with brands that aren't even in South Africa. So, and that's really just the power of, uh, of YouTube. When you showed us the exclusive of the video that you were editing, is that, um, is there conflict within yourself of giving information, but not giving away too much? Because I guess it's like uh, breaking a record back in the day and playing it, but it's a white label. You don't want, too many yeah. people to know where you, you're getting your treasures from. So is yeah, that quite yeah. a difficult one to balance? That's a very good, it's a very good example of that. I remember like, yeah, I mean, if anyone, if there are any people that are interested in, or have been DJs or whatever, will know how like secretive the tracks are. You know, white labels are like, that shit just got me so excited to DJ again. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I could just think about like, oh man, when we were up in like your neck of the woods, like going to the what was it the warehouse? Yeah, uh, yeah, the warehouse. Yeah, 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 the warehouse club. Crawler. Yeah, yeah, Mickey Slim. Yeah, Funk Mickey Agenda. Slim. Shout out Slim all the time, man. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we, we were all sitting around in the car. It's like all like you know, like maybe he can have this track kind of thing. Uh, I guess with like with sneakers, you know, I would say like three years and 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 further back, uh, definitely like your plug is your plug. Like that's your plug. You don't share that shit. <laughs> but you know nowadays with with the emergences of global marketplaces like StockX or Goat, I don't know if you heard of any of those. Yeah, uh, but yeah. they're basically websites uh, where literally it's a global marketplace, so I can sell anything from South Africa to a buyer in Venezuela or wherever, uh, and they basically handle the transaction and the authentication of things. Um, I think since then it's become a lot easier to get access to shoes. Uh, so I mean, like I can buy any shoe that I want give or take a couple of friends and family things which are which take a lot more work but you know you can pretty much get access to like 90 percent of shoes available anywhere in the world um at a, at a click of a button um so things have changed a lot now there's obviously with the rise of instagram and just with the rise of sneaker culture in general there's so many more people into it there's so many kids that want to make a quick buck uh on flipping kicks and stuff so there's i mean with this video that i made now i've spoken about probably like five or six different resellers that I've used personally. And those are the ones I'm happy to like actually publicize on this channel because I know these guys, I've got their phone number. I know their name. Like I know that they're not going to screw anyone over uh, with any fake product or anything, but there are. And it, help, and it, it helps with the localizing, like you said, which was the initial yeah. inception yeah. of the channel. Absolutely. Absolutely. But as I said, like there are thousands, maybe millions of fake sellers out on Instagram and, you know, it's just like it's now become a a more of a a thing of finding people that aren't going to screw you over or aren't going to sell you fake. And I mean, like I've been screwed over from people on eBay before. Like it's not like it's not like a new phenomenon by any means. It's just like become a lot easier and a lot more like widespread now. Do you have any tips or uh, any pointers for how people can avoid uh, rogue traders? Rogue yeah, trainer look, traders, that'd, Everest, be a good, yeah. that'd be a good segment, you can have that. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, there was a part in this video when I was coming up with names of fake Instagram sellers. <laughs> it's quite funny, <laughs> to check it out later. <laughs> but uh, yeah, look, I mean, my, my, my golden rule in this thing, if it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. Like, I mean, I use this as an example, um, again, and I use this in the video, 
like I, I gave you the value of the shoe uh, earlier. I mean, I think locally probably around 50 grand uh, for a dead stock pair of this. Like if you see this on an Instagram site, then it's like anything less than like 45 uh, or if it's like up for one and a half thousand or a hundred pounds or whatever it is. Um, yeah, that's, it's, it's not gonna, it's, it's, there's no way it's, it's too good to be true. If they've got a full size run of these for a low price. It's too good to be true. So like, it, it's just kind of common knowledge, like understanding the realistic price point of it. And you can always find out what that is by going to a website like stockx.co.za. I mean, stockx.com rather. Uh, and that will give you the live market price uh, at any given time for what that shoe is worth. So it's very unlikely it's ever going to be less than what it's listed on StockX for. So it's a good way to basically just like check yourself um, before pulling any things. And also like try buy shoes in person if possible. Like, you know, there's there's been so many examples of people paying for things and then sellers just never shipping. Um, but also relying on uh, things like sneaker stories to really use the verified and like the authenticated uh, sellers um, and just kind of grow your network from there. Is that pretty cool meeting people and then getting to see their collections? Because I had a friend who was big with the casual trainers, actually. He had some of the rarest like uh, Keglers. They were only 500 made out of like a, yeah. a kangaroo sort of skin. And he had two of those and people really enthusiastic to meet up and see his collection and he'd go and see theirs. And, you know, yeah. it's a real like camaraderie and community amongst the, the yeah. sneaker collective. So is, is that something that you found as well that's been positive? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like the amount of friends that I've made like in the sneaker game is crazy. Like we help each other out all the time. And uh, like not even with trainers, like, <laughs> yeah i mean like we uh we're a very like close like close group of people i guess um and it's people from all different walks of life man like we're all like we're all in this game for like one common goal and that's to get shoes <laughs> so like it, like i've made i've made friends that i would never like have ever met before definitely if it wasn't for like lining up outside stores and raffles and things like that like and you just like, you're kind of forced, you, you're never going to be able to get everything you want. Like, you just got to accept that shit from the start. Uh, so you need like, you need as many friends in this game as, as you can, essentially. And like, you can also, you can pick up with people. Like, I like chat to people overseas all the time. Uh, you see my collection on Instagram. We hit it off. Like, I see, I see shit that they've got. Uh, I've done deals like from people in Greece, the States, lots of the States, uh, in UK, Australia, Germany pretty much all over Amsterdam. There's like literally shoes from majority of countries in here. Like it's awesome. That is cool, man. And that, so does that happen where you're getting up at like midnight to camp out at a shop and you start seeing these familiar faces and before you know it, the conversations start and that's where your, your crew sort of forms. Yeah, yeah. Look, I mean, I would say luckily, but almost not luckily. <laughs> Uh, the first come for like first come first serve campouts are like pretty much a thing of the past at the moment. Um, it's the way that uh, shoes are, are are sold these days are through raffle systems. It's a lot easier. You don't have to sit outside in the cold and rain and whatever in midwinter to try copper pair of shoes on a campout. Uh, everyone kind of gets there at the same time. You get given a wristband with a number on it. They just pull a number out of the box. If it's your lucky day, you get to walk in the store and purchase the kicks. Um, it's just like, it's a massive time saver. <laughs> but there are, there are some also like really creative ways that some of the retailers are, are doing it because what, the, what this does now is like with resellers, they've all got like bot teams. And uh, so they'll just pay like just a bunch of people to come and stand there and get a number. So it like ups their chances essentially. Uh, but some of the retailers, they make you actually like wear the shoes out of the store. So then like they're worn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or if it's a particular shoe, like, this shoe, for example, uh, not the specific one, but there was another Jordan one uh, where one of the retailers made you wear a Jordan one to the launch to be able to like get into the raffle. So you had to prove that you were into Jordan ones and you actually wear Jordan ones to be able to get it. So yeah, like things have changed a lot, but I mean, it's, it, it's, it's good in the sense that it's a massive time saver and it's just like you're, you're down to luck. And then it's also having camp outs, you really do generate like awesome relationships and get to know people a lot better uh, when you've got like 10 hours in the cold standing next to each other. <laughs> but yeah.
Uh, there's just a question that's come through. Uh, and likewise, mm. if anybody who is watching, if you want to put any questions through, if we can fit them in, I'm, pap I'm more than happy to do that. It says, For sure. why do you... Uh, sorry, it's from Nabil Ahem. Uh, sorry if I've mispronounced that. It says, why do you think local South African brands don't prioritise women's sneaker drops? The women's sneaker releases in SA are always so limited. Yeah, look, um, it's, a very, it's a good question. And it's something that's not actually just limited to women's stuff. Um, there has been consistently a lot more women's sneakers, especially with the Jordan range uh, coming out. So there's been a lot of different mids. Uh, you would have seen like a lot at Jack Lemkes, uh, if you know that store uh, archive as well. Um, the biggest issue with that is size curves. So South Africa gets like very limited size curves. So with women's, we only go up to a UK eight. I think it is, is like the biggest that we get in Jordan 1. Uh, so I'm a nine and I can never get any of those because a lot of these sneakers are like unisex now. Mm. Uh, the sizing differences between them are, are very, very minor uh, these days at least. But as far as Jordan stuff, uh, I've seen a lot more women's stuff personally. Like I, I almost feel like we're not getting enough men's stuff compared to the States as well. But I completely hear what you're saying. Like there's, there's not enough emphasis on uh, on women's stuff. It's something that I'm also wanting to change with sneaker stories. If you are a follower there, um, to get more like woman oriented information out there and actually make more of a scene about women's drops. Um, but I think it's something that's definitely gotten a lot better, at least from Nike's perspective. Um, from Adidas perspective, they're kind of very under under the radar with with women's stuff, at least as far as I've seen. Like it's kind of released in the same manner as men's. Uh, but there's been so many awesome collaboration stuff from like Stella McCartney as one of their big sort of brand drivers. Uh, it's just sitting on the website. Like no one really, I don't see it in store, but it's on the website. So I would just stay tuned uh, to, um, you know, these brands uh, like women's division on their websites because they're always awesome stuff. Like I, I look for stuff for my wife on there like pretty often uh, because I know that there's, it's just there and nobody really knows that it's there. Um, I, I see that you say true that there are unisex and the men buy up the women's sneakers and size. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's going to happen. So look, I mean, Jack Lemkes was a was a really good example of how they do these drops. Uh, I think the previous uh, Jordan One mid uh, that they released just before lockdown uh, was only available to women, um, so you could not be a man going in there and buying the size. So like that was really cool. I think that they should do that, and whatever's left over, the men can buy it, but. Uh, obviously, it's, it just comes down to like a, a sizing curve distribution issue. And that's that's not really from the retailer side. It's just the allocation that retailers get in South Africa. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> good man, good man. You mentioned a, a couple of collaborations. I had some Stella McCartney's back in the day, some silver light mid tops. They were sick. Uh, there's yeah. the collab that they did with Jeremy Scott, I believe. Is there is yeah. there any other uh, collaborations that you've seen out there that you, you you you're a fan of? Yeah, I mean, look, the Jeremy Scott stuff was wild. Like with the wings on the side. Like are those the ones you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. chain one which caused a lot of issues because it was like a link to slavery and stuff like that there were like crazy stories of like that jeremy scott time uh he just like just went full throttle on that shit but there are really some of the coolest shoes and wild stuff out there uh you know today like there are a lot of collaborations through adidas consortium um you know like most of them are done with like footwear retailers so your sms uh which i think you guys have out in the uk uh, end clothing, all of these kind of like big retailers that get collaboration opportunity with Adidas. However, there are brands like 424, like they've got a lot of really awesome stuff coming out. Uh, Sean Wallerspoon's got a collaboration. He just did the big one with Nike. Uh, uh, this one over here, which I don't know if you've seen before, but also a very yeah. valuable shoe. Um, yeah, so he's basically, he didn't get to do his, he had another sample of the shoe, which he was hoping to release. Uh, and that didn't happen. I think Nike kind of just backburned him or whatever. And then he moved to Adidas. So now he's doing two or three shoes with Adidas coming soon. Uh, so that's something that I think a lot of people are looking forward to. Um, but I mean, like, yeah, like most of the collaboration stuff that I've got, I mean, I'll just cruise around here quickly. Um, yeah, like it was it's all like it's crisp. Yeah. <laughs> 
So this is a, I mean, this is one of the coolest ultra boost and one of the more like slept on ones. It's from Eddie Huang. And I mean, look at the little panda detail, like materials and everything on the shoe are unbelievable. Uh, it also came with a cool like Chinese barbecue boys, like shoe bag. <laughs> uh, this one was a career exclusive. So this is actually a funny story. Um, I had to get someone from Korea through a friend of mine uh, to buy the shoe in South Korea and uh, send it to South Africa, which is a very difficult thing to do, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'd asked the guy uh, if he would mark this shoe as a like low value invoice, so I wouldn't have to pay like thousands and thousands on the customs duties. And I said, just make it like thirty dollars or something like that, which is like it's a pretty good amount because taxman wins, I win, everybody wins, all good. And uh, I said, like, put that on the invoice. <laughs> anyway, so I get the shoes here like a couple of weeks later. I'm really, really excited because it's the first pair in South Africa. Like, it's, they were limited. Like, very, very stoked that I made this happen. And like underneath the insole, and well, to give you some context, the shoe is called Show Me the Money, right? Uh, and it's a famous uh, reality show in um, Korea. And uh, so I'm like, okay, show me the money. I, op I like open up the shoes. I like lift the insole up and there's like this money that I don't even know what it is. Like I've never seen currency like this, but it was the equivalent of $30. And he, he like through the language barrier, he thought he like put $30 in the shoe <laughs> instead of on the invoice. So I paid full invoice value for, <laughs> for these shoes to custom when they came. And now I'm sitting with a bunch of Korean money I can't do anything with. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's cool like little stories and things like that, which I always have like good memories with certain pairs. Um, but yeah, there's lots of cool collaboration. Obviously you got your Pharrell stuff, just kind of died out now a little bit. But um, yeah. Did you meet did. him? Am I tripping? Yeah. Yeah, I did. This is actually the shoe where he signed there. It's all back to front as you can from the camera. But yeah, this was this was a really amazing day. Um, very, very last minute. Like no one knew that there was a global citizen concert that they were doing here in Johannesburg. And um, yeah, obviously as Pharrell's an Adidas, you know, Adidas ambassador, um, he, he pulled in here and Adidas were like, shit, like we're going to do something here. So they did like this very, very quiet um, meet and greet session, little chat and interview with Pharrell in their Sandton City store. So I literally, like I woke up at like four o'clock the next morning, got on the plane to Joburg, like literally had to run from the airport onto the train, like gun it from the train <laughs> station, gun it to the, I was like there just in time. Luckily, like cause the Adidas guys had invited me, I got it to like, get given my little golden armband and like cruise in there and sit down. And and then the next minute, like I just heard this fucking more because the word got out, obviously. So there were thousands of people outside uh, the store all trying to see Pharrell and he like pulled in, he, like the, the lift doors opened and it's just like security straight into the, into the store. There was like commotion everywhere. And yeah. And then we got this really awesome Q and A and got to chat to him afterwards. Uh, he was pretty impressed with my, one t-shirt that i've got here which is uh, it wasn't this one but it's the from the human made brand uh, i think it was the curry up one that i was wearing yeah yeah um and yeah this one over here mm -hmm. so he saw that i was wearing this t-shirt and he was like no way he's like how did you get this t-shirt here um <laughs> because it's obviously his mate nigo is who does that yeah. brand and he's got some involvement there as well and you like couldn't believe that like there was a human made t-shirt out in uh, Cape Town or Johannesburg, South Africa. So like, it was a pretty cool thing. And then I took the shoe as well. Uh, obviously the OG Pharrell, um, very valuable shoe as it is, but now that he signed it, it's kind of like priceless. Uh, and then there was another shoe, which I don't know where it is. I think I've put it back in the box, which was a basketball shoe that they dropped that day, which was incredibly overpriced and I kind of felt obliged to buy it and I've never worn it and I can't sell it either. <laughs> because you have a priceless trainee you thought you could just <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But it was worth it. It was worth it for the for the signed uh, the signed OG. <laughs> how do you then uh do you wear your trainers out and about and how do you uh minimize where to wear them? Because as a collector, 
you know, you don't want them getting damaged because it, 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 mm. if you ever were to sell them on or the collection on, then it, it devalues that trainer. But then as a trainer fan, you want the love of wearing the trainers. So how do you merge those two? Yeah, look, I mean, I, I generally wear everything. Like, I mean, going back to the shoe, but I've worn the shoe quite often. Uh, it's like, for me, if I love the shoe, like enough, if I, especially if I'm spending on the thing. Like if I'm paying over retail for that thing and I'm, I'm 100% wearing it <laughs> like I need to I mean there are some shoes that I haven't worn like I mean I've had this shoe for four years I've never worn it but it's one of my favorite and I'm just like I have to I just like I don't know I like I get to stages where I'm like okay cool I'll just randomly put it on like I actually put these on the other day in one of my lives just to prove that I would <laughs> <laughs> but I mean there's there's stuff like these these Jordans still compete fresh they're union exclusive um i will wear these at some stage like i'm just i'm not ready to wear them yet like i just go through these weird phases man like like these guys i only wore recently um i was still like i also like i, I sit with the shoe i see if i'm still like really really keen to wear them like one thing that like really kills me is what the shoe looks like from the top down so like i make sure yeah. that that's all good uh, and then you get some shoes which, like, I get and I put on feet straight away. Like, I mean, these friends and family uh, kits over here, like, this this took me, like, three years to get. And this was never sold. Like, I had to literally hustle my ass off and irritate someone for three years, pretty much, to get the shoe. And, like, I put them on feet in, like, he literally handed me them in a car park. And, like, I just took my shoes off and put them on straight away. <laughs> and it's one of the more valuable shoes that I have. So, like... It it just it really just depends. Obviously, like having this amount of shoes is both awesome and both curse. But the awesome part about it uh, is that I can wear a different pair of shoes every single day for a very very long time. Uh, so generally, things don't get worn out too much. But then I've got like I've got other stuff if I can spot them, which are completely beat because I do wear them more often than not, and I wear them to festivals or whatever. So. Yeah, just you've got your beaters, you've got stuff that you you take care of, and that's about it. But then I I all, I, I imagine it's the same for you, um, but maybe in more caliber with the ones that you've got, where you know there was like the top shelf, and then all of a sudden it just become every day. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like when it yeah, just I mean that's that literally shit. trying to find these. Uh, I don't know where they have disappeared to. But I got a pair of Y3s that are like the most sort of valuable Y3s that exist. And those were like top shelf. I had to do like a big trade to get them with a pair of like Travis Scott's or something of that sort. But maybe oh, they're not even on my feet. I thought they might have been. But um, yeah, they're like, they're completely beat. Like I've ripped the leather in them so bad. I literally don't know where they are, but whatever. Oh, yeah, they're right there. <laughs> So like this shoe, I've like repainted like on the midsole and it's already dirty again. But you'll see like, let me just put this down for a second. You'll see like how badly it's ripped here. Like through yeah, the yeah. leather. <laughs> but I mean, still like this shoe's like $1,500 or something. And uh, <laughs> like, I'm just like, I'll never get rid of them. <laughs> like no matter how deep they are. So like, yeah, I mean, even the lettering starting to come off on that, on that center stripe that yeah, like, this is a shoe I'll buy again and again and again. Like, it's just one of those that's so good that you have to wear it all the time. It goes with everything. <laughs> I've got two sort of uh, wrap-up questions. One's probably the most cliche, but I'd be remiss if I didn't ans ask it. Do you have hmm. a favourite pair? Um, no, I don't. Um, it, I, I think, like, especially in in this room... Everything that's here, uh, because, I mean, I've recently let about 100 pairs go, uh, which is always a hard thing to do. But, like, if it's still here and on the shelf or whatever, like, it's a favorite of mine. Like, I think, like, these guys, uh, friends and family, Para, Air Max Ones, like, these are just, they're always going to be a favorite. Like, this was just a love at first sight completely. Uh, then you've got stuff like the 4Ds, the Daniel Arsham 4Ds. These are like just on another planet. Uh, really, really <laughs> nice. I mean, like obviously, like the Jordan One stuff uh, behind me is also really, really cool. Uh, there's some 
really nice ones up there as well. I think you can see the OG Yeezys yeah. as well. Um, yeah, what are the pink like, ones? Uh, I've got my eye on them. All chat, all conversation. Yeah, these are these are uh, Comme des Garçons one eighties. Um, yeah, these are absolutely fire. I bought these in from the states, I think. Uh, we didn't get them here locally, but they had three different shades of pink. This is the one. You've got to go all in when you go pink, man. You've got to, <laughs> you've got to make sure that shit glows. Uh, but yeah, these, I mean, they've got good wear out of them now as well. Like, for summer, this pair of shorts, just banging, man. They're yeah, really, man. really cool. I love them. Yeah, so, I mean, pretty much everything in here is, uh, is a good do film have, favorite of mine. Do you have a favorite model? of a specific trainer? Is it the Jordan? Is it yeah. a particular Max or? That's yeah. the Adidas Ultra Boost. You just, you, you can't beat this shoe, man. Like out of every, like I can wear this like to work all day, like they're super comfy. I can run in them, can go out in them. Like I've, I've got like 30 or 40 of them. Like they're just all different colors, all different designs, all different materials. Like there's one for like literally every occasion. So like, uh, yeah, I mean, even this guy, like they just, the versatility on, yeah, they just, they literally just keep coming. <laughs> there's, like, <laughs> there's literally like every single color. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the Ultra Boost is like, it's such a defining shoe for me. Like not just for Adidas, but like in my sort of rotation, I'll never go anywhere. I fly, like, I mean, even the ones I'm wearing right now, the high beast, like, you just, you can't, you can't beat it. They're like, just so versatile. You can literally wear them everywhere, anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Which is your favorite year of Air Max? Year or like model? Uh, the, the model, so you know, is it eight, seven? 92, 95, 97. You know, the actual, uh, the, the year yeah, which well, goes with it. Yeah. Do you have his favorite year? I don't even know if I got um, those years right. I'm going to, well, I'm just, I'm going to go with the, with the birth of Air Max one. Um, that was 87. Um, so like, I mean, my Air Max ones, I absolutely love, like, there's a couple of them here. Like, this is one of the ones that I've, I've had for a few years, but I only put them on last week for the first time. Um, but this particular shoe is always going to be special for me because I'm born on Air Max Day. So it's pretty awesome that every single time <laughs> we have a uh, an Air Max Day every single year. It's always on the 26th of March. So like there's always a well, majority of the time there's always a special release uh, that's on Air Max. But obviously, yeah, it was 26th of March, 1987. Uh, so I think that's that's always going to be my favorite year. But I mean, like we see retros and stuff with Nike and Jordan all the time. Uh, you know, things, the first uh, Air Jordan 1, I think, was 85. Um, and we still see, like, new iterations. The one thing with shoes is that they don't last, <laughs> especially, like, 30 years. So, like, I mean, even some of these, like, there's a Keep Ripping, Stop Slipping pair that I've got uh, somewhere that is from 2007, I think. And, uh, yeah, that one I'm actually kind of worried to wear now because... It's still, yeah, yeah, they're taking these bad boys out. Yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> yes, me. So, like, they've got, That's like, sick. the leather toe box and, like, the shape of the shoes are like, completely different to what you get in, like, Air Max ones today. Like, it's got the embroidery on the back, the materials, the graphic underneath on the outside. Yeah, it's like a rad little graph piece there. And, yeah, like, they're, they're, they're incredible. Like, really, really awesome shoe. But I am generally worried that when I wear this, the midsole is going to crumble. So it's like you can't go too far back in like collections all the time. Uh, so that's another reason why you should just wear your kicks. <laughs> and then I suppose the final one from me uh, to lead off the back of, well, now I've got two, but to lead off the back of that is um, there's a lot of replicas, like the actual brands are putting out replicas. Like, what, do you have yeah. a, a thought on that? Because obviously it devalues the originals in the collector price, so, but it also gives people more of an opportunity to, to embrace that trainer. So I wonder what your thoughts are with that. Are you, are you talking like, like literal replicas, like retros of the shoe? 
Yes, yeah, so, so like they all um, released the same shoe like a few years it, later. It's the same, so yeah. it's the same shoe. So say yeah. like um, there was there's a, a shoe shop in uh, England called Size, and they were doing them all with the casual trainers. So you'd get like yeah. um, your Milan's or your Dublin's, and they were really rare. Or you get like your Adidas consortiums, really rare, and then. The, yeah. started producing them again in mass numbers which is devalued yeah. the original trainer so I, I didn't know if you were aware of that or if you've got a, a point of view with that yeah yeah absolutely um look i mean it's something that's been highlighted a hell of a lot with the easy line with adidas uh on the 350s specifically so one particular shoe which they're uh, in the storeroom at the moment is the 350 zebra um so that shoe is has been re it's set to re-release again in australia and china exclusive i think uh sometime this month but that will be the fifth time they've released a shoe in two years <laughs> so, like, so it's, and it's that, it always done and, limited runs and then they just release another batch of them yeah well they're a bit like on the next batch they'll just do a hundred thousand and that's what they're doing now with this other drop that's coming up so i mean to give you an example like that shoe when i was collecting like easy 350s uh, because I really did not see them doing so many. Um, I had every single one of them. I paid, that shoe was like the most limited when it first dropped. Like we're talking like maybe 18 pairs in the country. And I paid high. I paid like, I think I paid like 12 grand or some shit for that shoe. And Ooh. then then they uh, they restocked it six months later. And it was worth the retail because they restocked it in like, such crazy quantities i don't even know if it was six months maybe it was a year later or something like that but um yeah like it can really kill it like i mean i just don't buy 350s anymore so they lost one customer there just from doing that <laughs> so uh, like I, it's cool that it gives more people an opportunity to buy shoes but the way that nike because everyone keeps comparing it like oh fuck it nike do this all the time like with jordans and whatever they restock stuff i'm like yeah but they do it like six years later or whatever. Like I had a pair of the Jordan 5 uh, OG, the Fire Reds, which just released this weekend. So the pair that I had in the room here was a 2014. And now it's six years later, 2020 released it. So like that makes sense because the 2014 one is bust now. Like not bust, but it's like, you know, it, it's time it's for a new one. You can, get a, you can get away with that. You know, some people have come and gone since then. Yeah. It's not like six months or a year later where like, you seen the same shoe release and now everybody's got it. Like, I don't want to wear that shit, dude. I'm like, I'm like, if everybody, like, like with the easy 350s, like if everybody's wearing it, like I'm not putting them on when I leave the house. Like, oh, you know, it's just, that's my mentality on it at least. And I know like it has pissed a lot of people off, but there are cool ways and there are good ways of doing that. Like there's a lot of shoes like OG Air Max ones. Like I wouldn't have been able to get those shoes if it wasn't for the anniversary two years ago. So like, it's yeah it's pros, pros and cons to, to both of them sick guy i want to thank you for your time uh and speaking with me in such depth like you have about the trainer world my final one is what does your wife make of your trainer addiction and has she got the same sort of addiction with shoes <laughs> or does she just look at you thinking what is going on yeah 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 she I, I don't know, man. I, I, I tend to refrain from asking too much. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, this room is like, was probably a little bit of a worry for her. But uh, well, it definitely was. But uh, yeah, I think like, you know, I really started putting energy into shoes, like kind of after I left DJing. And I think like she supported that. So uh, yeah, like, it's fine, but uh, she definitely doesn't have one of these just next door. That would just be, that would be too crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Do you want to let people know where they can find a bit more about uh, Sneaker Stories and a bit more about you as well online? Yeah, sure. So Sneaker Stories uh, on Instagram is at sneakerstories.tv. Uh, I could probably just type it up here if it's possible. Um, and then obviously available on YouTube as well. So let me just put this up here uh, in the comments so you can go ahead and follow that uh, for everything we do on Sneaker Stories and then that can link you through to YouTube, etc. from there. Otherwise, there's my handle, Chris Jack. Uh, reach out if you want to know anything about trainers here locally in South Africa or anything else in the world of sneakers from around the world to the world. I'm here. Mate.
cool guy and I'm, I'm proud of how it's proper growing and it's, you know, from a passion to something that is becoming a proper vocation for you and the respect that you're getting for it as well and the love that you're putting into it. It's noted this side of the world. So respect, keep cracking on. Thank you, And uh, we'll catch up another time. You know that respect for you as always. Absolutely, man. dude. Really, really good to catch up with you again, man. It's been real. Respect, brother. Peace and light. Take it easy. Stay safe through this as well, yeah? Yeah, same to you, man. Appreciate the Peace. time. Take it easy, Cheers. bye. There we are. So Chris Jack, uh, all the way from Cape Town, South Africa. We need to speak to him about his uh, project, his online channel, sneakerstories.tv, which is also on YouTube. You can follow him on Instagram as well. Uh, so yeah, that was class, man. It was real good in-depth insight. Thank you for everybody who stopped by. I'm sorry if I've not got any of your uh, questions across to him. Uh, got as many as I could to figure them into the actual conversation. But if you're new to this, I'm Ben Random. Easy, everybody. Uh, and this is Loose Lips. It's a chat show created around spreading good vibes, positivity to everybody, speaking with people from different walks of life to gain from their stories and their inspiration. So if you like what you've seen, add me at Ben Random on Instagram. If you want to see the back catalogue of the previous conversations, go on YouTube and put in Pop Cult Chic and you can find the back catalogue there. Or likewise on YouTube, you can do pop.cult.chic and you can find everything on there. After this chat is finished, so I'm going to wrap up and in the next four minutes, we're going to be speaking with Cam Hurley, who is out in Boston, Massachusetts. He's actually in the group. He sent a little cheeky laugh, so he's ready. Uh, we're going to be speaking to him about settling in Boston and also a bit more about his music and just see how life is going for my boy out there. So join me in around four minutes and we'll crack on there. Other than that, peace and light to you and yours.